Nepal mountains. In their realm of six million people, they rely on manpower to transport stones without animals or the wheel. And the energy for that is provided by another amazing food source. They are famed for their gold, but their true treasure is less glamorous. A tuber native to the Americas and unknown in Europe. Cultivated here some 8,000 years ago in the region around Lake Titicaca, in today's Peru and Bolivia, 12,500 feet up. What is now a staple food in Europe was an American invention. By the year 1491, the Inca grow thousands of variety, domesticated from wild ancestors, some poisonous, some even carnivorous. They preserve the tuber by mashing them into a substance called chuño. After harvest, potatoes are spread on straw and left out to freeze at night. During the day, they are exposed to the sun. Trampling them eliminates water and allows them to dry. Chuño can be stored for 10 years, providing excellent insurance against possible crop failures. The Inca carve step-like terraces into the mountainsides to stop the soil eroding and create a flat surface for their crops. Terraces absorb more sunlight than steep slopes, so potatoes can grow at the highest altitudes. And all this is achieved by manpower alone using wooden tools. In North and South America, in 1491, farmers grow corn and potatoes to feed their people. They have none of the domesticated animals that benefit Europe. For Inca farmers in the Andes, their chief source of meat and transporting goods is the llama. This is the biggest domestic mammal in the Americas. The llamas also offer dung for the soil and hides for clothes. But they can't milk or ride them. And the animals can't pull a plow. So they are no good for farming or for travel. But their wool is a true blessing. It is warmer and lighter than sheep's wool and produces a greater yield. The second principal domesticated animal of the Americas is much smaller. For the Aztecs, the turkey is vital. Even today, for their descendants in Mexico and Guatemala, the turkey is so important that they dedicate two religious festivals to it. Native Americans have such few domesticated animals because the biggest native mammals in the Americas died out long ago. At the end of the last ice age, the megafauna in the Americas, the giant bison and the mastodons, went extinct. And the reasons for that are probably twofold. First of all, as the ice age was ending, the climate became much hotter and drier, and this killed the vegetation that these very large animals depended on. Secondly, the arrival of hunters into North America crossed over the Bering Strait land bridge from Asia, coincided with the extinction of these animals. And very likely, these hunters went after these large animals who were slow and had a lot of meat. And what this left in North America were animals such as bison, deer, and antelope 
They are not suited to domestication. In 1491, Native American tribes hunt wild animals to survive. But the village dwellers in the forests of the Northeast and nomads on the plains develop methods to guarantee their meat supply. They can't domesticate these animals, so they find a way of making their prey come to them. In the years before Columbus, Native Americans noticed that grass grows better after being burned by lightning strikes. So they start to burn the prairies and plains themselves. Many tribes use this technique, including the Sioux, Cheyenne, Comanche, Shoshone, and the Blackfeet. America in 1492 was not a pristine wilderness. That's a romantic myth. It was in many ways a managed landscape. Natives regularly burned the forests and the prairie in order to attract game. Not only does burning create lush grassland, it keeps the forest open and makes hunting easier. The new rich pastures lure and increase the numbers of herbivores, as well as the predators that feed on them. They domesticate the land in order to attract wild animals. Nomadic Central Plain Indians are able to lure the biggest mammals in the Americas. The bison. Wherever they roam, bison are the main source of food and clothing and of tools made from their bones. But still, the bison thrive. By 1491, North America is home to perhaps 30 million. They reign on the prairies from Montana to Texas, pushed east by Native Americans along a path of fire, opening up the forest into virgin land. The bison gain a new habitat, far beyond their original range. Native Americans have no guns or horses. They hunt on foot. They dress in hides to get as close as possible and hunt with the bow and arrow, or spears, all made of wood and leather, bone and stone. Hunting the bison is essential for their survival. In Europe, hunting is no longer about survival. Noblemen hunt for sport, for pleasure and prestige. and only the nobles are allowed to hunt. If ever they catch a peasant hunting, he will be punished for poaching. Unlike in America, 
There's no room here for an abundance of wildlife, for endless herds. In Europe, the land is man-made. Agriculture and cities push the wildlife back. Untamed land is now a rarity. But they have one other major food source. Fish have long been cheap and abundant for every social class in Europe. Christianity, the common religion all over Europe in 1491, approves of fish. Eating meat is banned on more than 100 days a year. The demand for fish is huge. But intensive agriculture is damaging the fish supplies. Once unlimited, supplies in Europe are dwindling fast. What happened to the fish stocks in Europe? As people started to grow crops and cut back the wild woods, this released huge amounts of sediment into the watercourses, which changed them from being fast, clear-flowing rivers and streams into slow, turbid rivers and streams. And the, the, the freshwater fish found a problem with this, particularly migratory species that came up from the sea to spawn in rivers, animals like salmon and sturgeon. There was another factor which also cut down the supplies of these migratory fish, and that was that people started to build dams along rivers, and when that happened, the migration runs were blocked and the populations declined. When supplies of fish dwindle in their polluted lakes and rivers, they turn to the sea. For the first time, they set up large-scale sea fishing. They find abundance on a scale never seen before. And they exploit it. Cod and herring from the North Sea are the first to be fished. Every five years, catches double. By 1300, thousands of tons of dried fish are exported from Norway to Britain alone. But this is 1491. Europe's rivers and lakes are now dirty and empty and surrounding seas are fast becoming depleted.